that the data is readily available. So data availability for using AE as a tested party still remains a challenge. But uh, if you can have that data and that can be made available to the tax office, it's, uh, uh, it may not be very easy for them to deny you using those as competitors or as, as tested parties. The domestic transfer pricing this will work uh, Yes. So in fact, in domestic transfer pricing, when you have two parties to the transaction uh, and only the payer is being benchmarked, can you use the recipient as the tested party? That is uh, the whole bone of discussion uh, happening across, even in the tax department. That when only the payer is being tested, can you use the recipient as benchmark? And the law does not uh, stop you from doing that. Identification of comparable transactions, selection of the most appropriate method. Uh, now, while we have seen uh, you know, in, in, uh, in a few cases, this was not, uh, you know, the selection of method was not done very rigorously. I mean, it was a casual statement passed that copy is not available, CPM cannot be applied, TNM has to be selected that way. So the way is, and and, uh, and which I have seen what uh, you know complaints, uh, you know, the, even the tax department makes, and including the DITs and the CITF, they say where the assessees fall short or weak is in documenting the FAR and the selection of method. They just write a single line. They don't give it the supporting or the basis of why each method is being rejected. See, in Indian law does not say that you know you have to reject one, two, three, four, five methods and come to the sixth or something like that. Each method has to be tested and said whether this can be applied or cannot be applied. And in a circumstances when none of the method is suitable, probably you could apply something which is relatively more suitable compared to other methods. Or maybe you could use multiple methods as well. So, you have to document this very well, unless, uh, otherwise it will be very easy for the TPO just to throw off your method and apply this method. First, what he has to do is, for a TPO to make adjustment, first he has to reject the study or reject the benchmarking analysis of the assessing and then only he can apply his study. So he cannot just merely reject without giving any reason and apply his own study or his own benchmarking. So it is very important to reject and scientifically demonstrate and document the rejection also very well why this method is being rejected. Like he said in, uh, uh, as an example that each diamond is a different diamond and AOE was using cup you need to demonstrate why a cup cannot be used. So document that, very important. Indicator ratios, now generally, there are various ratios, but generally we end up using the net margin ratios, but there are other ratios which we'll discuss. Functional adjustments, and then finally the conclusion of arm's length price. Do you guys want to be profit level indicators concerned? Uh, is the department uh, yes, I am coming to that. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, the department has accepted other indicators in recent times, in the last concluded uh, you know, assessment round, uh, where uh, you know, we were able to convince the DIT. Uh, we were able to convince the DIT on, uh, on, on using of other ratios. So although Typically, when you are using net margin methods, uh, what is really mattering is the profit ratios. But when you are doing comparability to identify or uh, you know compare whether a particular industry is comparable or particular uh, uh, you know, company is comparable to yours or not, you could do a ratio analysis then as well. As far as PLI is concerned, my experience has been in earlier years they were not accepting, but. Uh, in the last concluded round, in one of the cases, uh, it, it, it did work out uh, well for us. Where the DIT was convinced that, yes, you know, this is a more appropriate indicator, but you need to demonstrate how the other PLI is more effective or more appropriate uh, compared to the net margin which is traditionally used. So these are the other ratios uh, uh, which could be used then in other conditions. Comparability factors, uh, now most of the time the challenge comes 
when we are doing a net margin analysis based on the financial information, how do we determine if this, if this, if, if this company is comparable or not? There are various factors, even financials itself, which throw light on comparability. Comparability of size can be determined by sales network. Now this is being questioned, challenged and let's see what happens to this uh, in the higher court. But so far the view has prevailed that uh, you know, size is not really, I mean the latest view is that size is not really the key unless you are able to prove how it affects the pricing. Market conditions, so export sales, so domestic conditions are different from uh, you know, export, uh, I mean international conditions. So what is the best demonstrator of this? Export sales. Non-core functions, non-operating incomes. Marketing function, advertising and marketing spend. The AE in India, uh, the assessing in India does not do marketing. We typically say that. <coughs> when we are using comparables, they have a huge marketing spend. Are these really comparable? These are the indicators. By business risk indicators, who has the business risk? The one who is suffering bad debts. If you see somebody having bad debts, those do suffer the business risk. Foreign currency risk, R&D function, credit risk, <coughs> asset base, intangibles. So these are the differentiating factors which if you look deep into the financials, not just reading the balance sheet and profit and loss, but also a lot of information is revealed by notes to accounts. So we have to keep that in mind while doing the comparability analysis. Various economic adjustments, uh, now again the question, how far is the department accepting adjustment? <laughs> Not very well. But again, in the recent rounds, there have been adjustments which have been accepted on account of working capital. So working capital has got some acceptability now, but earlier uh, there was no sanity. But idle capacity adjustment, Great period adjustments are still not being accepted very well. Yeah. More so, if you see, department has never been making these adjustments. These adjustments are typically made by SSC and rejected by department. No, because the thing is like he, uh, one of the SSC and uh, actually I am just pointing out towards the Panasonic case wherein the uh, SSC, uh, SSC had, had made the under capacity, capacity utilization adjustment and uh, saying that it has got a, you know, uh, as against the installed capacity what a particular level of uh, capacity was being utilized in the particular year and accordingly made the adjustment but how the how the same is being reported with the reported by the SSC I mean AO, assessing officer. So, uh, and finally the judgment has been in favor of SSC, but, uh, but my question is like ki, uh, how this kind of adjustments are prevailed and how these, uh, first of all, how these kind of adjustments are being made? So, as I said, computed. Uh, you know, as I said, in, even in Panasonic's case, assessee is the one who made the adjustment, department is the one who rejected the adjustment, and Though so although IDAT said that uh, you know, uh, the adjustment is correct, so the law does provide for adjustments with the backline being adjustment should be accurate, adjustment should be scientific, okay, they should be able to be demonstrated and they should be relevant in the present case. So idle capacity adjustment typically is when you are not using at optimum capacity. You know, your, your costs are higher and so your profits are lower. So, uh, there are a lot of statistical formulas to derive at these adjustments. If you, you know, the, the, for making these adjustments, you have to rely on statistics. The formula is uh, in that. Even working capital adjustment, what we have seen historically have been very simple. Ideal capacity adjustment in Panasonic's case was very simple. But if you uh, go to deeper analysis and economics, uh, you know, statistical formulas can be used to, uh, to make these adjustments. So while we are all struggling, you know, there is so much difference and economic adjustments could be made, there is very little guidance available in India on how these adjustments could be made. And internationally also, uh, there is very limited information available and these are just now starting to, uh, you know, develop and statistics around that is also developing.
add or create new, you save all the files. And when you say send it to the USC, a new output sheet is created. So this is how the output sheet would typically look like. To further expand the comparables, we make a search on the NIC codes. So again in this, there is a tab uh, in, the, uh, in the right of these NIC codes. So we identified a few NIC codes for this. And we said add to current OSC. So this added the data to the already identified companies. Further broadening the search uh, using the raw materials and products. So we went and selected the <coughs> name of the product. We did some search on the product. We identified out of uh, these searches, these types of product could be relevant. And then add to OSC. So we got a result of the maximum possible set of comparables from this data. Although there could be variances and if you added more product names or more varieties, probably you would get more data. So this is the process for identifying data. Then what we really do is after this, we extract information or query these, uh, query the database for financial information of these companies. So we query by financial statements. There are various options. We query on the annual financial statements. Then whether you want rupees in crores or rupees in millions, that is also option available in crores. Uh, what are the financial fields that we require is from the, uh, you know, the box in the middle that we identify. What are the various things that we require? Uh, ideally, what uh, you know, I would recommend is think this process through before you start, because a lot of times after you do some search, then you realize, oh, I should have accepted this data as well. Like I said, for comparability purposes, you need data of export sales. Maybe you need data of R&D expenditure. Maybe you need data of depreciation on intangibles or value of intangibles. So think this through what all information we need. Put all those uh, you know, checks here for all those relevant fields. Then select the year that you want to query on. Or uh, select first the whether you want to query on standalone or consolidated financial. So on the right hand side, S stands for standalone, C for consolidated. Select what information you need out of that year, total income sales. So this is all coming in from what you've selected over here. Give a range if you want to filter here itself, give a range here from this to this. So it will only extract those data. Then query on year, which year information are you looking at? So for progress it is year followed by four digits of year followed by two digits of month. So if you see query on date just below the middle box, it is 2013 March. Companies in current OSC. So because we are querying only those companies which we have identified, so I have selected companies in current OSC and then I am pressing the button add to OSC. OSC is output sheet, WC is working sheet. Uh, you know, Progress has various functionalities which you, know, you could ask uh, somebody from Progress to demonstrate. So this is what the data would look like. Now if you see a lot of companies have wiped, that means they do not have data for that particular year, March 2013, they did not have data. Then export the data or copy the data or save the data. What, uh, this is what we typically do, although there are some functionalities available in progress to do the filtering process also here. But we export the data and then analysis is carried out uh, using a spreadsheet software like Microsoft Excel. And here again we save the user set. For if we require to query on this user set for future or even for subsequent period or subsequent years, we save this so that I don't have to go through the entire process again. I just have this ready information of the identified companies. And then I can further query on that. Then I do quantitative analysis, which I said we use spreadsheet software like Excel to do some quantitative analysis like filters on turnover, filters on various other things. <coughs> then we do qualitative analysis. Qualitative analysis is done on the identified set after the quantitative analysis where 
we look for lot of more information available in the public domain for that company to find out if this company is really comparable, not comparable. Look at the annual reports, the director's reports, the most two accounts. They reveal a lot of things. And then finally, we make a accept project matrix. This is what a typical accept project matrix could look like. I mean, uh, could have various more steps added or less steps depending on the particulars of each case. And this is the final uh, that will look like. Okay, these are the final comparables. This is the arithmetic mean. And RCC's comparable, RCC's uh, operate TLI was 11.34 and arithmetic mean of comparable was 7.51. So, conclusion, transaction is worth a zero to be found there. Case study 2 is a variation where we've used three year data, so which is only coming out 39 in the final sheet, which you could look at other steps remaining same or maybe with a little variation. But here we've extracted three years data and looked at their averages. Very important thing when you are carrying out benchmarking analysis, what do you keep in mind? Understand the business and the FAR to the greatest of detail and document it. This is the key of the benchmarking study. If you don't understand what the company does, how do you identify what the comparables are? Now, where it is, uh, you know, if you maintain this strong documentation, it is very difficult for the EO to disprove your documentation or your analysis. Understand the pricing policy of the company or of the group. This is very important. Is the pricing policy based on some same principles or some guiding principles or something which can be used or helpful to determine ALP? Transaction wise analysis versus entity level analysis. What is to be done in the present case? Understand very well. Look at the circumstances. Also try and uh, you know think about what will the AO do in our case. So build your differences when you are documenting your study. Identify alternative sources of information in public domain. It is not that only progress, capital line and ASTP are the sources. There are various alternative sources available. Industry databases, pricing databases, uh, stock prices. I don't know if, if uh, you know, these could be used typically somewhere. Uh, commodity prices on the exchange. So these are various things uh, which are alternative sources which you could look at and uh, you know come to. So exhaust all the possible sources before you conclude what you are going to use. Because today you may restrict it to one particular thing, but three years down the line, you would say no, I don't, uh, you know, I think you should also look at these and probably the results are different. As far as possible, use multiple sources for qualitative analysis. Don't restrict yourself to just analyzing on the basis of financial information or the company website. Look beyond that. Look at industry reports. Look at crystal analysis reports. Various things. Credit ratings also. Analyze implications of market conditions on business of the SSE. Avoid cherry picking because if you do cherry picking, how would you substantiate that? And then why would why would you stop? How could you stop EO from doing it? How do you consider a loss making company? So take a proper stand whether you want to consider a loss making company, not want to consider. If you are considering, just see their historical data. Are they consistently loss making? Then they are typically not what a normal businessman would like to have as a situation. So it's not a normal business circumstance, and it, it could be rejected. But if it is loss making for a particular year, probably look at the financials deeper that is there some adjustment to be made? If not, consider as it is or give proper analysis. Is it making your analysis sense or is it going to be easy for the AO to reject it and document it very well? Even if a company is a consistent loss making company, but the top line is improving, the revenue is improving and the loss is purely because of the normal business reason, whether that company can take it. It depends on the industry again. So as I said, so if you are in a long life cycle industry where 
in a general or normal uh, you know company would take three to five years to settle down and then start making losses. So, for example, infrastructure industry initial years you cannot expect them to make profit. So, it really depends on what industry it is at. If you say that I'm in a software industry, but I'm making loss for I mean software services industry, and I'm rendering services only to my A, and I'm making loss, not acceptable. Compare loss. Compare Even in so. Why would you want to use a persistently loss-making company even in software situation? I would say look at properly analyze that company, see if it is making sense. Are the others also in the industry in the same league? If not, if this is the only red flag out, it will be easy to reject. Maintain consistency in all your tests, different years. In in, in the same industry, if you have three clients. Try to see that you maintain consistency and not change it based on the needs of the client. This will help you in documentation as well. Make suitable adjustments well back by supporting your working basis. Document the whole process along with results. So, the key in successful successfully uh, you know, meeting with transferizing audit is documentation, documentation, documentation. With this, friends, I would like to uh, you know, thank you all for a patient hearing. Thanks. Friends, we all would agree that Jinger has elaborately covered the important aspects of documentation 